In the last episode, we learned how you can predict the tide by simply observing the moon phase. In this episode, we're going to explore the significant effect that weather has on the tide. The main driving force of weather is air pressure, and this has a massive effect on the tide. Starting at the very basics, what actually is air pressure? Air pressure is the weight of air above us. When there's high pressure, cold air is sinking and it increases the weight of air above us. Opposingly, when there's low pressure, warm air is rising and it decreases the weight of air above us. So, high pressure is cold air sinking and low pressure is warm air rising. So high air pressure is synonymous with clear blue skies and you've got cold air sinking down, increasing the pressure. And as that cold air sinks, it literally pushes down the surface of the sea and it gives you lower tides. And in contrast, low air pressure is when you've got warm air rising and that then turns into clouds and rain and wind and with the warm air rising, that brings up the sea level as well, so you get higher tides. And for every one millibar drop in pressure, the sea level rises by one centimetre. The average air pressure at sea level is 1,013 millibar, with 1,040 being extremely high and 980 being very low. Okay, so we've got this drawing split in half. So you imagine there are two different days. That's one day and that's another day. So on this day, when you've got the wind blowing off the shore, it's an offshore wind, this is the tide height, it's the predicted height where the dots are. And what it's doing is it's literally pushing the water back. So you'll get much lower tides than what's predicted. So the tide will be predicted there, but actually it'll be much lower. Whereas on days where you've got the wind blowing onshore, this is an onshore wind, it's pushing the sea higher up and you get higher tides. And if this coincides with low air pressure, you've got the air rising, you've got pulling the sea up and blowing the water up, and this is when you get a lot of flooding. You get exceptionally high tides there. And here, if you've got high air pressure, so cold air is sinking, that pushes the sea down even lower and you've got much lower tides. So the wind and the air pressure together can range from really high to really low, whereas this is what was predicted. So when you've got high air pressure and offshore winds, you've got much lower tides than what's predicted. And if you've got low air pressure and onshore winds, you get much higher tides than predicted. Now if you add those especially high tides caused by meteorological factors on top of a high spring tide, that's when you get a phenomenon called a storm surge. And the southeast coast of Britain is really susceptible to that. Let's have a little look at the map and we'll see why. So you've got typically, you have these big low air pressure systems come in off the Atlantic and that rises up the sea level. And what happens is the sea gets choked in the Dover Straits here where it's really narrow and the sea rises by three metres in this area over what's predicted. So if that happens at the time of a high spring tide, you've got your highest tides of the month and you've got an extra three metres and all of this coastline is susceptible to flooding. And on top of that, you've got these northerly winds that are blowing down and they're creating waves that then come even higher up and give you, give you your flooding. And what's interesting is that the spring tides happen at the same time for every beach. So where we are down here in St Margaret's and Deal, the high spring tide is around midnight. So we get our storm surges around midnight. Whereas North Norfolk, which is up there, because the tide waves travels this way down the coast, they get their high spring tides around six in the evening. So when there's really low air pressure and onshore winds and a high spring tide, they batten down the hatches about six in the evening because that's when they're more likely to get flooded. So when you're planning an adventure affected by the tide, whether it's surfing, sailing or paddleboarding, 
you need to check the tide times and the wind and the air pressure. This way, you'll have a much better idea of what to expect. <laughs>